what it is. Oh, what's up? Oh, what it is. What's up? Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is going to be a continuation video on um, how to complete um, clinical paperwork, like what you can expect. Um, each university is different, but I'm just showing you guys what mine does as um, far as clinical paperwork. Um, I'm not going to put any patient information on there. HIPAA can't violate HIPAA. So I'm just going to just show you guys like blank, you know, the blank examples. And then I'll just, you know, talk you guys through it. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, just drop them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into how to complete clinical paperwork and I'll explain it. Okay, so y'all, boom. The first thing, um, the first step to like, um, the first thing when you're doing your clinical paperwork, you gotta start off with the patient profile. So you gotta, you know, um, your instructor's, um, your instructor's name, or whatever. Then you got the patient's information up here. The reason for admission will basically be the medical diagnosis. Then you got the um, pertinent health information. Um, basically, like what 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 health information is basically impacting what's going on with the patient now. So let's say the patient just had a. Um, a little, 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 little uh, amputation or something uh, an amputation it that can be pertinent information if they had um something dealing with their uh diabetes that wasn't managed properly which led to an amputation so the amputation of the actual surgery would be information that you would put here because it's pertinent to what's going on right now meaning that's important to what's going on with the patient now then you will put um right here is the social cultural assessment um that's more like the education background like um uh, is the patient in school what's the patient's high level of education can they read write do they have a job their family history like their family um, their religion whether they smoke um whether they drink all of this stuff will go here and over here this is the growth and development part um i honestly i keep forgetting what type of hierarchy it is but this pertains to the early this pertains to like the growth and development part um i'm pretty sure everybody has taken um uh like uh growth and development life i'm pretty sure every i think that's like a prerequisite like growth and growth and development but anyway let's say if the patient's like 23 years old um that falls under the early adulthood growth and development and you would uh put whatever is associated with um early adulthood which will go here and then far as legal consideration meaning like if they have any um advanced directives if they have a code status like if they're a full code any protective services any arrest or pending charges like if you let's say you have a patient that's an inmate you will put that patient has been a um you patient has arrest you know in blah 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 so yeah then this is the actual um this is the actual um information far as your nurse's notes so you will put your name and all that stuff then um the vitals between whatever when you take it let's say you take it at eight you'll put the patient vitals here and then you know your next set of vitals there if your patient is on strict i's and o's you will put the information here and you know their output their o2 and then this section here is for your nurse's notes so let's say you went in at eight o'clock then you will put whatever the date is eight on the time then you will put whatever you did hey i greeted the patient and i introduced myself greeted the patient and i did a what you did a head until assessment and um you gathered your vital signs and then let's say you go back later and then you check you're checking on the patient let's say your patient is on a turn schedule then you'll let you know uh you'll put that you checked on the patient um 
assisting the patient with turning, assist the pain level, um, edu educate the patient on the importance of turning. If you know, you need to put that information there. Also, um, if you're going to be doing any sort of teaching to the patient, like saying, hey, you don't lay on that side because it can create a pressure ulcer, you need to make sure you put the patient's, uh, whether the patient understood or not, or the patient's reaction to the teaching that you gave them. Was the patient um, re receptive to the information or not? Um, so yeah, anytime you go to the patient's room, which you did, this goes here in the nurse's notes. So here, this is where you put like the um, medical diagnosis up top, patho of whatever's going on, clinical manifestation, manifestations, um, the labs, like if they have any x-rays or um, done in collaborative work, like the respiratory health, the wound care health or did um, home health, like any type of collaborative work that is um, that is done with your patient and the complications included with that. Then this goes to your head to toe assessment as far as like the neuro mental status, like the patients, if the patient, um, it was the patient oriented to place, um, person place time and um, you basically put um, like their fall score, um, pupil dilation. These are different sections like multi, multi skeletal, um, like their range of motion, cardiovascular, um, like what type of sinus rhythm they're in, what um, <clears throat> the resp resp uh, respiratory. You'll put like what did their breath sounds sound like. <clears throat> the GI, like when you're palpating and listening for bowel sounds, you'll put all that information here, whether you, where it's hypo, hyper, um, active bowel sounds. Um, then you have GU, um, is the patient, you how the patient used the bathroom, do they have a catheter, are they able to void on their own? And if they are, like, what is the characteristics of the urine? Like, is it clear? Does it have sediments in it? And then like, um, this is the skin. <laughs> like if they have any um, like scars, you'll put the characteristics of the scar. If they have like um, any wounds, this is where you address all that there. Then this is the medication, um, the IBM medication sheet, where you will put the uh, medication in the classification here. You'll put the medica medication classification here, dose, time, route, MOA, rationale for why is that important for the patient to have it, and the major side effects. And then you'll put whatever diagnostic tests have been done. And then you'll put your lab, um, laboratory tests, which is your w WBCs, RBC, H HGBs. It's like some of this stuff is pertaining to um blood work so that's like the blood work pertaining to the patient um um like this category it helps you know basically find what's the weakness of what's going on uh <clears throat> the basos and the SOs and the limbs and the mono all of that focus on the focus on whether where the serious infection is um this portion of it is basically to help you um, know if it's any risk for blood clotting. Of course, your sodium potassium is your electrolytes. Um, the BUN and creatinine is basically for um, to see if your kidneys are working properly. And the ALP, ALT, AS, all that is basically a liver function test. And then you got your plan plan of care, basically your nursing diagnosis and short-term, long-term girls, outcomes, interventions, and evaluation of that. Then you have the lovely, 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 lovely 
S bar. Situation background, assessment, recommendations, I think concerns is like a last one. But yeah, and that is all a part of your clinical paperwork. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to clinicals and that's it. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, now that you got an inside scoop on what you can expect as far as clinical paperwork, just keep in mind, like the majority of the stuff you're gonna have to need to, you're going to need to get while you're there. So in the midst of you making sure you take care of your patients, making sure that you're helping out on whatever floor that you're on. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a task, but you'll be able to get it done. Just, you know, make sure you get as much information as you can, um, because that'll help you out. Um, also to, um, take your time with it. You're not going to always get it right on the first time. It's still stuff that I forget to do or put on my clinical paperwork, but I just wanted to just give you guys that insight of how you can complete your um, clinical paperwork. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's just gonna be a lot of jotting down the information and then making it make sense so you can know how to articulate that and write it down. The majority of the time doing clinical paperwork is how to articulate what you're doing. Like head to toe assessment and all of that. You need to make sure you know how to properly articulate it so you know somebody else is coming behind you they know like okay they can you want to make sure you are articulating it to the point where if they were to just read your clinical paperwork they'll know exactly how to be able to take care of that patient so that's just about it as far as the clinical paperwork um don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and um, don't forget that once we reach 300 subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway. So comment down below to increase your chances of, of winning the giveaway. If you are in clinicals, hey, let me know how your clinical is going. Let me know that you're in clinicals. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.